We are now going to actually proceed for the separation of the mixture. We know the mixture type is water insoluble acid and water insoluble base. Our separating agent is sodium bicarbonate. So let, this is a weight packet which will be provided to you after you have got the signature of the teacher or examiner on the mixture type and the separation method, separation reagent and separation method. So this is my weighed packet which has a weight quantity of the mixture. All earlier part of the mixture has to be disposed and this has to be transferred to a beaker. Okay, we will add our separating agent which is sodium bicarbonate. The mixture given to you could be anywhere between 1 gram to 2 grams. So we are going to add, to be on the safer side, about 15 to 20 ml. This is a 10 ml test tube. So I will add about 2 test tubes of the reagent, separating a reagent, which is my bicarbonate for today. Add it slowly. Remember there will be brisk effervescence and it might bubble out. Stir it. The brisk effervescence is due to the evolving carbon dioxide. We will add another test tube of bicarbonate to ensure that the acid is completely dissolved. We do not want any traces of the acid to contaminate our other component which is base for today. After adding about 15 to 20 ml of your separating agent, we need to stir for a good 3 to 5 minutes to ensure the removal of all traces of acid. We have stirred this for 3 to 5 minutes to ensure the complete dissolution of the acid and now we are going to filter this using a filter paper. Give it a slight washing with bicarbonate to ensure removal of all faces of the acid. So let's give it a little bit of a washing with bicarbonate and start transferring the residue also onto the filter paper. Remember to use small quantities for washing because more washings with smaller quantities is more effective. Just one more washing with bicarbonate and then we will proceed to wash with water. We have given two washings with bicarbonate to remove any traces of the organic acid which would have been present. We will now proceed to wash with water and also transfer this residue onto the filter paper. Two to three good washings with small quantities of water is very effective. As you can see, we have um, got the residue, which is our component B, identified as water insoluble base. We have washed it with bicarbonate and we have washed it with water, okay? We are now going to try to recover our acid by reprecipitation from this filtrate. The reprecipitation is going to be done using, we are going to use concentrated HCl to reprecipitate our acid. Our acid slowly. You will get a lot of effervescence because of the decomposition of the excess of bicarbonate which could be present. So that bicarbonate is being decomposed by this acid which we are adding.
Continue to add bicarbonate till there is no, uh, continue to add concentrated HCl till there is no more effervescence. Effervescence. That will ensure that your entire acid has been re-precipitated. vigorously and to ensure that we have decomposed all our bicarbonate it is better to check the filtrate to see if the medium is acidic which we shall do now with a litmus paper we will check if the blue litmus paper turns red as you can see the litmus paper is turning Red, okay, indicating that all the bicarbonate has been decomposed and the medium is acidic, it will thus ensure that all the acid has been re-precipitated. We will now proceed for filtration. You can do an ordinary filtration using a filter paper and a funnel like this, but for acids, it is always recommended that you do a filtration using a suction pump. Because uh, this is tends to be very light and frothy because of the evolution of carbon dioxide from it. And for this reason, it takes very long to filter if you use a normal filter paper and funnel. So we will now proceed to filter using a suction pump. Now we are going to use, uh, filter using a suction. This is a Buchner funnel which we have lined with filter paper and wetted it. We are going to place this on a Buchner tube which is attached via this pipe to the suction pump. We will switch on the suction and open the knob. After opening the knob, we will proceed to add our filtrate to this. And as you can see, rapid filtration will take place. Rapid filtration will take place. This will help us in filtering very quickly because of the vacuum created below. We have transferred all the precipitate onto our funnel and filter paper and now we will proceed to just give it one final washing with water to remove any residual traces of the reagents which we had used. We have now got our two components. This is component A, which is the water insoluble acid, and this is our water insoluble base. Okay, so our two components are there. After you have uh, recovered both your components, uh, the examiner or teacher would see that and specify which of the two you need to identify. For, uh, for this mixture, we will be identifying our component B in a later video. But let us now see how to proceed for drying, okay? But before we decide the temperature for drying, we need to ensure that our compound is high melting or low melting. So let's check how to do that. We will take a little of the compound, take a very little of the compound. Remember, yields matter, so we cannot afford to take too much of it. We will take a little of the compound, transfer it to a fusion tube, transfer it to a fusion tube, and transfer it to a fusion tube and put it into a boiling water bath. See if the compound melts. If the compound melts, you can be sure that the compound is a low melting compound and then we need to proceed for drying in, at a very low temperature. Most preferred would be just press drying and air drying, okay? So let's check, we have transferred a little of the compound, okay, into the fusion tube and now let us see if it will melt in a boiling water bath. So we place it over here and we observe that it is not melting. 
okay it is not melting the compound is as it is indicating that the compound is a high melting compound and therefore we can use temperatures of about 40 degrees for drying similarly let's check the other component also we will take this component little bit of it just a little bit of it transfer it into a fusion tube and dip it into a boiling water bath okay and check if the compound melts or not as you can see the compound is as it is okay it has not melted indicating that it definitely has a melting point above 100 degrees and can be therefore definitely dried at a temperature of about 40 degrees okay this must be done to ensure that you do not lose your compound while drying now let us proceed for drying what we will do is we need to remove this compound onto an asbestos sheet we will now proceed to transfer this compound onto an asbestos sheet we can just pick the filter paper line our asbestos sheet with a filter paper and carefully open this there is no need to open it fully because if you open it fully every time you will press dry you will be losing some amount of the compound so just keep it closed like this okay and press dry with a fresh filter paper okay so we will press dry to remove as much of water as possible so we will do this this will ensure that there is by folding it like this it will ensure there is no loss of the compound when we are press drying Okay, as you can see now there is no more much water coming out so we will just keep it as it is and we will transfer the second compound now this is the bukuna we just need to slowly pick up pick up our filter paper okay and transfer it carefully onto our as the store sheet Transfer whatever little compound is left on it. Transfer it carefully because all of it counts, the yields count. Okay, and this has been subjected to suction drying, so there is no need of press drying because we have already done it but in case you think you need to press dry then do not keep changing the filter paper keep one filter paper on it constant so let's do that we will keep this filter paper on it constant so we will press dry okay and change the filter papers on top of it and remove as much of water as possible Now this method of drying is called drying by reflected heat. You can even dry it in an oven by placing the entire asbestos sheet in the oven maintained at about 30 or to 40 degrees. With that we end the separation of this mixture which had two components water soluble acid as component A and water uh, sorry water insoluble acid as component A and water insoluble base as component B. Remember to subscribe to my channel, Dr. J's Chem Hub.